Hey, what's up? I'm Anthony, and this is my story about male strippers, rubber bands, and penis polish. Happy Thanksgiving. All right, so the year is right around 2000. I'm living in Savannah, Georgia, and I'm working as the house MC at a comedy club. House MC is the person who goes up every day, introduces all the acts, the feature acts, the headliners, makes all the club announcements, does anywhere between five to 20 minutes of stand up, depending on what the club needs, keeps the club moving. Place was called the Joke Yard Comedy Club. Great people, questionable name. They did a spoof on Junkyard. So the whole theme, the whole motif was junk. There was junk on stage. There was junk hanging on the walls. <laughs> And I get it, but every comedian that came there would instantly look around. They're like, look at this shithole. <laughs> I started at an open mic, just went there on an open mic and worked my way up and eventually got the house MC job. Right around 2000, I was kind of getting my groove with it. I was doing well. The owner liked me. The headliners liked me. I did a pretty good job warming up the crowd. And I got used to a lot of different types of audiences. I felt like I had done it all. I had not done it all because one week the owner came to me and said, hey, next week we're bringing in this lady. Her first name was Montana. They said, Montana is a great headliner. She brings with her a male review. At the time, I kind of don't know what male review means. So I asked the DJ, well, what's the male review? He's like, <laughs> strippers. I'm like, oh, strippers. Wait, male review, male strippers. Ah, oh, hell. Here we go. Okay, no biggie. I'd played sports all my life, been in the locker rooms, whatever. I thought I was ready. I was not ready. The owner tells me, hey, when the dancers get here, which I hate that they were calling them that, dancers? There's nothing you could call a dude in that regard that makes another dude feel comfortable. Strippers, when the strippers get here, when the dancers get here, when the dudes get here, when the entertainment gets here, everything feels a little weird. She said, hey, I want you to bring them back into the green room, make sure they have everything they need, you know, help them get prepared. Well, I'm like, I ain't nothing to get prepared for. You come in clothes and then you go on the stage and take off your clothes. I mean, you're stripping, right? No. Montana Weeks here. Montana's up on the stage. The first part of the show went great. The, man, the owner pops her head in. She says, hey, they're here. She brings them back. They're here. You take it from here. They're going to get ready in here. What you should know is this green room that we're in, it's a green room, but it's literally, it's basically a big closet, right? This ain't no spacious room where one person can go to that side of the room. We're in this thing together. So there's a small table in this green room and three chairs. She's like, yeah, they're just going to get ready in here. I'm like, ready in where? There ain't no here. Look how small this. Ready how? Like ready, what's that mean? I noticed both of them over their shoulder, they had a bag. So they had, it looked like whole suits or something in there. So I'm like, oh man, this ain't no low budget production. They, <laughs> they're about to go all out. The owner closes the door. And now it's just the three of us in there. The guy's like, all right, well, I'm gonna just start getting ready. The other guy goes, yeah, me too. And it's funny because while the dude, I'm like, oh man. So while the dude starts taking his regular clothes off, I'm looking at him and I'm like, man, I think I know this guy. Me and my boy, Fred, used to go to this gold's gym down the street until our memberships wore out and they started trying to chase us off and stuff like that. We tried sneaking there when we could, but we used to see this guy at the gym and I'm good with faces. So I see, and I'm like, that's the guy from gold's gym up the street. I'm like, Oh, I got to tell Fred, this dude's out here stripping. They start getting ready and the dude unzips his thing and he pulls out this whole big immaculate headdress, like this native American headdress and it goes, it's like colorful and it goes all the way down. I'm like, wow, this is classy. And the other dude pulls out his stuff. <laughs> and it was almost like a cartoon. He opened a big thing and in it was a, just a tiny little fuzzy, um, like fuzzy underwear. And he went with the caveman, like the uh, Conan the Barbarian motif. So he's got that. He's got like the caveman boots. So I'm like, oh, man, these dudes are into it. So I'm a little bit uncomfortable because they're basically stripping and I, I don't even know these dudes. But, you know, I'm, an, I'm a professional, so it's all good. I'm standing here. I'm kind of looking toward the door. 
and I had my elbow on the table like this. They're over here. I'm looking this way. All of a sudden, I hear like some papers rustling and stuff, and I'm still just kind of like looking over here. Then the little table, the table starts kind of rocking like this, right? So I'm like, I don't know what's going on over there. So the table's kind of rocking like this, and I turn and look, and the papers that were rustling were a stack of nudie mags, like dirty magazines. So now both dudes have out, I guess this is an industry practice. I didn't, <laughs> I did not know. They both have out like dirty magazines. They're both facing away from each other. So they're facing like the wall, but the one dude is like bumping into the table and he's like getting a jump start for the show. So I'm like, oh man, this dude is beating his dick like right here. This man is beating his dick and it's like moving the table. And I'm about to go out here and try to tell these people next week's drink specials and stuff. What happens after that? The one guy's bag was kind of like over near me. And uh, this is where it got weird. It was if you thought that was weird, this is where it got, got even weirder. The guy goes, hey, can you hand me that shoe polish right there? So I looked down, the dude's bag was open. And sure enough, kind of right on the top, there was a big can of shoe polish. Hey, can you hand me that shoe polish and those rubber bands right there? And I'm like, I mean, I am the host. I'm supposed to be get them everything they need. So I, I put them on the table. And the one guy goes, oh, you use the shoe polish trick? And he goes, yeah, yeah. Now, mind you, they're both still like prepping. He goes, you use the shoe polish? And he goes, yeah, yeah. And I'm thinking, what do you use shoe polish for? <laughs> what is this trick? I don't care, but I also have to know, why do you use shoe polish on your dick? So he goes, oh, yeah, yeah, it keeps the moisture in, ha ha, and then carries on about his business. I'm sure if you read the instructions on the back, that is not one of the designated purposes of that shoe polish. At this point, I I don't want to look, but you can't not look. I don't, I don't see, but I see him take, I see how much shoe polish he takes. I thought he might take a little dab. My man takes a scoop like he's about to polish a freaking army boot <laughs> what is he working with that he took that much or what is he doing with it and then what are they doing with the rubber bands only one took the shoe polish the other one went polish free but they both took the rubber bands and i saw him like putting them around and i'm like oh they're putting them around like like a cock ring or something you know keep the blood flow down there at this point, I'm starting to get concerned for their safety because I'm like, is that is that healthy? Isn't that how they castrate goats? I mean, <laughs> is this a liability issue if I don't say anything here? So they put the rubber bands on. They get ready to go. They're all suited and booted. I'm standing there. I'm freaking out. I'm basically in my mind. I'm praying for Montana to hurry up and get off stage for her to say a closing joke so I can go out there and tell the crowd that the strippers are here. Uh, Montana comes off. I said, oh, great job. Go out there. Tell the crowd, oh, y'all ready to see y'all mail review. Ladies going crazy. <laughs> and I got to tell you, like, they really entertain the crowd. The ladies love these dudes. The one guy even brought one of the ladies that they were all in the crowd and, and, you know, grinding and gyrating. The one guy brought the lady up on stage for like his big finishing move. He like put a blanket down on her and then he kind of like went under with the blanket like he was doing something. Then he pulled out and he like sprayed all over. He's on the stage. He had a lotion, like a little lotion packet, but you couldn't really tell. And it like sprayed up high and arched and hit the ceiling and stuff. And all the crowd's going crazy. And I'm thinking, I'm not cleaning that. I hope management knows I'm not, I'm not cleaning that up. I mean, I clean up the stage when the show's over, but I'm not, I got to draw the line some damn where. They come off the stage. I go out real quick. Hey, everybody drive safe and tell them about the next week's show and all that jazz. We got X amount of shows coming up this week. And when I go back into the green room, they're both in there, sweaty as hell, you know, feeling good, looking like post game, like they just won the championship. And uh, the one guy in the Conan boots, he goes, hey, man, don't you work out at that Gold's up the road? <laughs> he recognized me. I was like, yeah, yeah, I think I seen you in there. And he was like, yeah. Well, if this comedy shit don't work out, man, I could probably put you on. I could probably get you a spot. <laughs> And I've always kept that in the back of my mind through all the different things I've been doing in life. 
even trying to write my book. If there were times when I thought, I'm going to throw this book in the freaking ocean and go join the mail review down in Savannah, Georgia. <laughs> uh, anyway, I was just thinking about that today, thinking about all the crazy twists and turns life can take and roads it takes us down that we could never have anticipated. Have a good Thanksgiving weekend. Stay up, stay encouraged, and remember, everything connects. Peace.